Hi and welcome to my channel, my name is Magnus and today we're going to talk about site-to-site -site VPNs. This video will assume that you already have some working knowledge about VPNs in general. So to build a VPN over the internet between a gateway, a checkpoint gateway and some other gateway, either administrate by you or someone else, but it's not from the same management, so to say. So the first settings that we need to figure out is the peer IPs. So the tunnel need to be built between one or more locations, and that's why you need a peer IP address so you know what you should connect to. This can be an IP address or this can be a DNS. The second value that we need to figure out is like what is supposed to go within the VPN. And this is called the VPN encryption domain. So what is the specific traffic that you want to be able to send via the site to site tunnel or the IPsec tunnel. So the IPsec tunnel is of course encrypted. So we need to figure out what sort of encryption parameters are we going to use for this IPsec tunnel. So if we're going to try to find like our own peer IP address, how do we do it? Well, we can go under gateways and servers and then we just open up one of the clusters that we want to have within the IPsec tunnel. So I will take this one, the corporate cluster. And by default, the peer IP address, the our peer IP address that the partner should configure will be this one. And this is not always the public IP address. So this can be a 10 IP address because you use this to, to manage the cluster. And if this is the case, you need to change something called uh, the main IP or link select when it comes to VPN. But you don't have that option here. And that the reason why is because that the IPsec blade is not enabled. So this is what you need to enable first of all. So when you enable this one, you see that you get some additional settings here. And these additional, additional settings that you can select is for example, the link select. So if you don't want to use this main IP, you're able to select something from the topology. So maybe you want to uh, start a VPN tunnel from this IP address, then you can select that one here. And other than the peer IP address, we need a few more settings. And if we go back to our presentation, we can see here that we, for example, we need the VPN encryption domain. Okay, so how do we find that one or how do we configure it? So we go back to the smart console and here under network management, we are able to set the VPN domain. So here. For a VSX, this will be under the topology page where you have all the interfaces and routing and so on. You can set the same there. And I don't like to have like all the IP addresses based on the topology. I want to configure stuff manually. So I always do user defined and then I click this button and I do a new group. So group, simple group. And I normally call it like group uh, VPN domain and then the uh, gateway uh, name. So here we have the group name and then we need to add some networks that we have within this gateway. And I have no idea what sort of uh, interfaces this one have, but this is a demo environment and uh, we are not going to push the policy. We're not going to build the VPN tunnel itself. We're just going to see where we find all this value and how to configure it. So let's create a new network object. So let's say that we have a network 10.10.0.0.24. And let's do like this. Okay. And we add that into the group. So it's added. Okay. Of course, we need to, uh, <laughs> of course, we need to select this first as well. So just do here. So we have the VPN. So here we have it. So, okay. So now when we have the peer IP address of our own gateway and we have the VPN encryption domain on our own gateway as well, we need to configure the peer side. So let's assume that we have gotten the information from our partner and here we have the 30, 30, 30, 30, and we have an encryption domain. So let's configure this one as well. So to configure this, we need to create an object that represents the partner's gateway as well. And to do this, we need to click on new and then more and then network objects, more 
and then this one, I don't know how to pronounce this. And this is something that I always struggle to find. It takes me like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes to find this place all the time. I don't know why I have worked with Checkpoint for 10 years, but I still don't remember how to create this object in the first place. So create. And the first thing that we need to put in is the name. So you just put like, I don't know, partner uh, gateway. Partner gateway. And then we put in the IP address and we selected 303030. 30. And under the topology, here is where we can specify the VPN group or VPN encryption domain that this partner is using. So you take user define and let's create a new group. So group, simple group and group VPN domain to main and then partner uh, gateway and then add a network object and we selected 10 10 200 slash 24 and i always try to do this in a different color just because it's a vpn and i write like the partner gateway name here and this is just so it's easy to see it visualized in uh, in the smart console so just select it here and here and we can even change the color of this one apparently not the same <laughs> let's see if we can add it i think it was this one purple or maybe it was this one i don't know let's let's take one and just press ok and you notice that this doesn't come up here. This is still under network objects, but it will be a new uh, part here. So you will see all your partner gateways. Okay, so now we have configured the VPN encryption domain for our side, for the partner side, and we have put in both the peer IP addresses. But we haven't done the VPN tunnel. We haven't selected any parameters for the IPsec. Um, so let's do that one as well. And to do that, we need to go under security policy. And then we need to go down here to VPN communities. And we can create a new one. And normally I do meshed. And this is when uh, gateways are supposed to be able to talk to each other. It doesn't really matter when it's only two gateways. But if you have multiple ones, it depends on how many VPN tunnels are created between each gateway. Uh, so then we just do a name for it. I I use a name generator, so we have like numbers because I don't really like to put in uh, company names or stuff like that. I, I put in company names here on the comments. So I just put like a VPN 10,000 D100, uh, but I don't have that here. So just do um, VPN partner gateway. And all of these names, they need to be unique. So you cannot reuse the same name everywhere. So you need to have some sort of name standard. And that's why I generate out the name. But uh, let's pick the color. And we need to add both the gateways. So we have our own gateway. And that's the corporate cluster. And then we have this partner gateway as well. And you see here, here we also have which VPN domain should be used. This is something that was added in R8040 and I will talk a bit more about that later, but uh, this is a really nice feature. So now when we have configured our peer IP address, the partner's peer IP address and what sort of network should be within the VPN tunnel, we need to select all this VPN encryption stuff. To select all the encryption stuff, we need to go under encryption. So here, and here you have all the settings that you need to agree on between you and your partner. So this is something that needs to be documented. You need to write it down and you need to have this configured correctly. And I cannot stress this enough. These values need to match. If they do not match, the VPN tunnel will not work. 
So make sure to write all of these down. And this is not all of them. So this is part of them. So first of all, you have the Ike version. And with cloud-based like uh, Azure or AVS, uh, normally Ike v2 is being used. But uh, this is the default settings from Checkpoint. And this is something that you can change. And you can change it on the complete community. And from R81, it's possible to override the settings and have specific settings for specific gateways. This is also a huge improvement, but it's from R81 and you need to have it both on the management station and the gateway. But as I said, you need to write all of these settings down and how you agree this with your partners easiest is to just have a word file where you specify everything that should uh, should be configured for this VPN tunnel and you send it to your partner and he fills in his side and you agree on it and say like, yes, this is how it's going to be configured. But I will just keep this to the default settings because yeah, this is a lab. It will not happen anything. And the more settings that you also need to have, for example, here, tunnel management, how is the tunnel going to be created? Is it going to be one um, Ike essay, uh, like an uh, encryption key per host, per subnet, per gateway? Default is per subnet. This is what I normally use. If you want to exclude some services, this can be useful sometimes. And here is where you fill in the, the pre-shared key. And pre-shared key is something that you normally use for externally managed gateways, because if you're just doing site-to-site uh, -site tunnels between your own gateways running on the same management station, you can use certificates and it's really easy to set it up. So the, the complicated part when setting up site-to-site -site tunnels is when you're doing it to third party. Um, so that's when it's more complicated because then everything needs to match and it needs to match precisely. So then you will use this one, click edit, and you can fill in your key. I don't know the limits for the, for the key and how complex and so on it needs to be. I normally take like 15 to 20 uh, letters and I try to avoid some characters, but uh, most will work. Uh, this is something that if something is failing and something is not working and you see like the, the PSK is not matching, then you like limit, 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 and you end up in like ABC123 just to check that everything is working. But this is something that should be more complex than ABC123. So I recommend like 15 to 20 characters uh, random, of course. And this PSK is something that you need to send to your partner. Easiest is to do it with uh, like SMS. Uh, but there's always like uh, security guidelines on how you should share a key. So one other really important value is under advanced. Here you have the timers for the Ike phase one and Ike phase two. And these need to match with your partners as well. And keep in mind, this is specified in minutes and this one in seconds. So just make sure that you convert it because many vendors configure uh, Ike phase one in seconds, that's like 86,400 or something like that. Take it times 60. Uh, but make sure that these ones are matching between you and your partner. And this uh, disable NAT within the VPN community is something that we will talk about later as well. But uh, this can be good to have. I normally don't use it. I try to make it manual in the NAT rules because I think I have more control that way. So let's press OK. And you see here that checkpoint recommendation for the key is minimum 20 characters. So uh, skip my last remark about 15, take it from 20 characters and up. But I will just save it because I don't even know what I did put in. And yes, you're aware, if you go back here and you go into the secrets, you are not able to view it. In older version, I think in R65 or if it was in R71, you were able to see the shared secret. This is not possible anymore and you cannot see it in CLI, you cannot see it anywhere. So if this is something that you forget, you need to replace it. 
So uh, I really recommend you to document it, same as all of these parameters. Document them, all of these, the shell secret, the timers, and also what's included in the VPN encryption domain. And when that is done, you just need to publish as well. So now we have actually configured more or less all of the VPN tunnel. So what we haven't fixed so far is um, a policy and we haven't fixed the NAT rules. So make sure to do a policy as well. So maybe here. So if we do from our network, so that would be 10, 10, 0, 0, that one. And we want it to go to 10, 10, 200. Normally I try to use the groups here, um, but it depends on your rules and how it's going to be built. But uh, this one. And then you can, if you want, put in the, the, that the traffic needs to be within the encryption tunnel. So then you will need to specify the VPN tunnels and you have it here. And you need to have an action and you need to log it and uh, we need to take it both ways. So I will just do it like this. And uh, this is uh, traffic within partner VPN. So one thing that is really important now, of course, log, is that we also exclude the nattings. So I always do like this, nat, and I put it somewhere up here, and I do a new section, and I do like site-to-site -site tunnels, and then rule, and I do from uh, uh, the communities, back and forward because I don't want nattings within uh, my site site VPN. In some cases you do, and then you need to translate the source or the destination however you want it, but uh, make sure that you, you check on the nattings because this is something that can be um, incorrect. This is something that people miss because if you're letting it go under like here, under automatic rules, or if you have specified something, it will be hide-natted behind the gateway. And the problem is then that the encryption domain will not match because the partner gateway will see the netted IP address and he doesn't see the 10 IP address then. And then it will be uh, declined. So it will be dropped. So that's it. So we have made uh, the partner device. We have put the partner IP address, we have put the topology, and we have put his uh, VPN domain in it. We have put on, on our own gateway, the corporate cluster. So we have our main IP address here, our PRIP. We have the blade turned on. We actually selected in link select that we are going to use this IP address no matter what. And we also uh, did under network management, VPN domains, that we specified our own VPN domain. And we can see what is in, in here as well. And on top of that, we did do the VPN communities. We created a new one. We added both the gateways. We selected what parameters we should have. We selected what shared secret we should have and we should selected what timers we should have. So that's it for a VPN tunnel. And if you install policy and so on, this should work. So that's how simple it can be. So what are some new things that has arrived in the recent software? So R8040 actually brought quite nice stuff to the VPNs. And what I want to highlight here is the ability to select what sort of VPN domains per community. So remember, we did do the community on the gateway in my example. What is if you have to multiple VPNs to multiple different partners and you want to present different networks to each partner? There was no way to do it in the GUI before. You could do it in a file called user death that you could specify exactly which sort of uh, 
uh, VPN domain and how they should be sent within the VPN tunnel, but you are not able to specify it within the GUI. So it's first from R8040 that you can have different VPN domains to different peers or different partner VPNs. So this is a major change and it also requires R8040 gateway to actually work because it doesn't work. I, I don't think it works correctly if you have a lower version and just running it on the management server. At least I have struggled with it. So I would say that it needs R8040 on the management on, and on the gateway for this to work. So as I said, this was something that was possible to fix within a user dev file, but not within the GUI. So that Checkpoint added it in GUI, I would say finally. Um, long, long time that we waited for it, but finally, and it works. So in R81, it came one more functionality that I want to highlight as well. Not only that it support higher encryption, but you're actually able to, within a community that has multiple gateways, you're able to like exclude or have different parameters for some of the gateways. So this is really nice if you have a large like a mesh network where you have multiple gateways running multiple versions and some of the gateways are older so they don't support uh, the different ciphers then you can have still have your your main like this is what we want to run but sadly we have some site that is a legacy that we haven't had time to upgrade they can still be part of the community but they're running a lower encryption so this is uh, really nice to have. So even if it doesn't show so much within presentation, there are stuff happening on the normal like uh, network parts, like the gateways. It's not all the cloud fluffy fluffy. This is like the basic stuff that just need to work. So Checkpoint has implemented some nice features in R80, R8040 uh, and R81 when it comes to VPNs. They also implemented stuff like um, that you can generate it from uh, VTIs. So this has been missing for, for VSX and Maestro. So there are more stuff coming and I don't highlight all the stuff, but these are some major stuff that has really been, the community has waited for them a long time and they are finally here. So this is the last slide. So when it comes to troubleshooting of VPNs, this is it can be horrible. This is something that can take a long time and you really need to make sure to have like a meeting together with your partner that is helping you to set up this VPN tunnel. Because first of all, you need to verify all the settings. You need to more or less take print screens and send to your partner and say like, this is how I configure. Can you just verify my settings? This normally finds like the normal typos. So this is something that I highly recommend that you set up a meeting and that you're showing your work. You're showing how you configure it. You're showing your settings and just put it in so people can verify and check that you have actually put it in correctly. I don't know how many times I have put my stuff incorrectly and how many times the partner has put it incorrectly. And it's just a typo that caused the VPN tunnel not to go up. So, so this is just annoying. Make sure to be upfront with what you're doing and what you're changing. And here is also one thing when it comes to VPN tunnels. If you're changing one thing on your side, the partner need to have the same settings. But not only that one, you need to, or maybe you need to reset the tunnel. And this may be needed to reset from both sides. So VPN tunnels is very hard to troubleshoot yourself you more or less always need to have the partner's help so you can check your settings together and you can verify and you can send some traffic and actually see that it's working. So one thing when you are testing your VPN tunnel, try to send traffic from both directions. So the tunnel is created both ways. And the reason why I say this is because Checkpoint has a nasty feature called supernetting and this is something that was default enabled by default before, but it's not default enabled anymore on newer versions. But if you have upgraded from an older version to a newer version, this setting is remaining. 
So it's very, very common that Checkpoint is supernetting its network and that just screw up the VPN tunnel. And if you don't know what supernetting is, that's when you have uh, two networks, let's say uh, two slash 24s, and they are after each other, meaning like it's like uh, 200 and 201. Then instead of sending two slash 24s, it will send one slash 23. So this will fail when you are creating the, the tunnel to the partner, because then the checkpoint will send like, yeah, my VPN uh, encryption domain is a slash 23 and the partner has configured two slash 24s. That do not match and then it will fail. So I would say incorrect settings is the most common one. Secondly, is the checkpoint supernetting. And thirdly, it's some obscure things that uh, is hard to find. It could be like dead uh, peer timeouts. It, it can be other things. But in general, this depends on like the RFC standard when it comes to VPNs. It's like, you can do like this. You can do like this. It's not like, this is how it should be. This is how it should be. This is how it should be. So different vendors have implemented it in different ways. So it's just like VoIP. The standards are not like super clear and super specific. So vendors has interpreted it in a different way. And that's why VPN tunnels to, to third party can be complicated. When it's come to checkpoint to checkpoint, this normally always work. More or less, you can have all settings incorrect, just uh, the password need to be correct. Then it will just fix itself. Now, uh, jokes aside, it's a lot easier when it's checkpoint to checkpoint. It's harder when it's checkpoint to third party. And that's it's the same way when it's Cisco to Cisco, it works. When it's Cisco to something else, it can be problematic. So I think this is it, and I hope you did enjoy this video. And uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.